Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at how to create a uh, chain that has physics applied to it. So let's just show you what it looks like when we hit play. So we'll be creating this from scratch, learning about how to sort of split a shape and rejoin the edges, how to add physics properties to it, and how we can adjust the sort of weight and sort of dynamicness between these meshes. So the view of these Blender tutorials is we'll be making assets that we'll be using in other programs. So we'll be utilizing these assets for things like Spark AR, Lens Studio, Unreal Engine, etc. Uh, but to begin with, we need to obviously get our heads around Blender and the kind of nuances of the application. So to begin with, I'm going to just start off with a clean project, file new, general. And whenever we're starting a new Blender project, we always have this light, this cube, and this camera in our scene. I'm just going to hit A to select all, and then hit delete. Because we want a clean, fresh project. So I'm going to go to our Add, Mesh, Torus. So the closest shape to our um, link, or chain link, will be the donut shape, or the torus. I'm going to hit Numpad 7 to give me a top-down view. I'm going to change my view mode to, to edit mode. So you can do this by hitting tab or up here in the top corner. I'm going to press Z and change to wireframe view. So the reason I want to be in wireframe view is when I start selecting these vertices, uh, we want to be able to select the top and bottom at the same time. By going in wireframe view and looking at it from a top down view, when I make my selection, it'll select the, everything within that um, vertical axis. So I'm just going to draw a box over the top half of my donut, like so. I'm going to hit Y, and what this will do is this will create a split or a cut along this line here. I'm going to hit G for move, and then I'm going to hit Y again to constrain it. So I can now move it along the Y axis, uh, and it won't go on the uh, X or Z, um, which is what I don't want, obviously. So I want to line this up so the edge is touching my line on my grid, like so. And then going to select my bottom half of my donut, hit G, Y again, and move this down. So the, it lines up again with this line here, because I want to make sure that I keep my origin point to zero, zero, zero. This will just make our life a lot easier, and we don't have the headaches later on. So with this now created, I want to hold Alt, and I'm going to click on one of these little vertices here. What that does is it selects all the little vertices along that uh, face or edge. And I want to join this edge up with this edge here. So to do that, I'm going to hold shift, then click and hold alt, and then click on one of these vertices here. So I should have these two selected. Shift allows me to select more than one selection to add to my selection. Alt selects everything with on that face or edge. And then I'm going to go to Edge and Bridge Edge Loops. This will now join our two edges together. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So again, Alt, click, Shift, Alt, click, Edge, Bridge Edge Loops. I can now press Z and go back to my solid view. I can also go back to object mode by hitting tab, like so. So here we have our simple link. I'm going to select this shape. I'm going to hit Shift and D to duplicate it. I'm then going to press Y so I can move it along the Y axis. And I want to position this so we have this sort of little bit of gap here, but so they're kind of intertwined like so. I'm now going to hit R and Y and then 90 degrees, so 90 on my keyboard, hit enter to confirm, and so we should now have these two linked up like so. I don't, I want to make sure they don't intersect, so I want to make sure there's a little bit of a gap there for the time being, because our physics will handle that to a degree. I'm then going to select these two shapes, hit shift and D, and then Y, and then drag them along and just create a copy. So now I've created a copy, I can press Shift and R to repeat, 
as many times as I want to make my chain as long as I wish it to be. So now I've done that, I can select all of these toruses. And go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. And what this does is just make sure that these little orange dots here, which is the middle uh, sort of origin points, are exactly in the middle of each of our toruses, which is exactly what they are at the moment. So with those all selected, I can go over to my little panel here. I'm going to select the little physics icon here, which is a circle orbiting another circle. I'm going to select rigid body. And I'm going to select the shape to be a mesh. I'm also going to, let's just check that's correct. So active, dynamic, mesh, that's all correctly set up. And now I'm going to go to object, rigid body, and copy from active. So what this does is it basically copies the uh, rigid body uh, properties from the uh, one of these torses. So in this case, it's this bright orange one here. And it'll copy those properties to all of the torses that I've got selected at the time. So copy from active. And now if I was to select any of these torses, I should have my rigid properties set up like so. Now I've done that, I'm going to select one of my links. I'm going to select my first link here. And this is going to be our anchor point. So this could be attached or modeled to be a kind of um, on a pole or mounted to a wall bracket or whatever you wish. So with it selected, I'm just going to hit the dynamic button here. And now if all is correct and I hit play, we should have this sort of linking uh, chain link here that has a bit of swing to it because it's just dropping down due to physics. Uh, but this link here won't move because we've turned off the dynamicness on it. So I'm just going to again return to the beginning. So what I could do now is I could obviously select one of these and I could start creating material. So I could go to the material properties, create a new. Uh, I'm just going to make this a sort of solidish black. I'm going to make it slightly metallic. I'm just also going to change my view to show my material preview so I can see my material uh, applied to my scene, which it is like so. Now it's created, you'll notice that it only copies it onto that one um, torus. So I need to select my uh, other ones and I just need to now click on the drop down and individually select these materials. You'll notice when I do a group selection, it doesn't actually uh, copy that material across, so I do have to do this sort of individually. Uh, there may be a quicker way of doing it. Uh, again, I'm not 100% sure on that at this point in time. But for now, I can do this. So I've now got this material copied across. But whatever I do to that material, I'll now copy across to every single one of these. So if I was making any changes, like make it a bit more shiny, uh, that property, that material property would copy across to all of them. You can see we've got this kind of very polygonal look to it. So what I could do is add a modifier and add a sort of smooth modifier. So let's try adding it to this one and see what it does. Uh, da, da, da. Probably don't actually want to do that. So I'm actually not going to bother applying um, a smoother to it for now. Uh, but we probably could have done, should have done that probably first before we uh, applied our physics. But anyway, that's neither here or there. So what I can do now is I could start playing about with values. So if I wanted this to be a sort of link and I wanted it to be two poles, I could select my end torus here, go back to my properties and turn off dynamic, hit play. And now these will have a bit of a kind of sway to them. So this is what I mean, imagine you had two sort of street poles here and you wanted a chain link. Uh, this is a simple way of doing it. We can also affect the mass of these objects. So let me just turn off the dynamic mass back on. So I can make these uh, individual links way more. So let's say I want this end one to be really heavy, like around 50 kilograms. 
um, and I can have to obviously apply this to each individual torus. And let's just hit play. These final three here, oh, we have a lot more weight than the others. Uh, in fact, there's a bit too much weight. It actually sort of snapped the uh, connections. So let's just uh, bulk that up a bit so that it's a bit, uh, it's a bit stronger. So you see it snaps at the point where it's the weakest because the weight is too much for the uh, meshes to hold. So do bear that in mind. And there's obviously that is the intended effect you're after. So now they're all 50. Except for that one there. They should hold as long as they're all the same weight, which they do. And that's the kind of way that you can sort of see that you can affect the kind of um, mass that these would have. So if this was hitting against another object, these would hit with a force of 50 kilograms. Um, and again, if we wanted our link to break, we just make sure we have a weak link. So when it starts swinging or the physics enact, it would just break like you saw before. I can also add things to the end of my object. So I could go to add mesh and I can add a sphere. I'm just going to scale this up a little bit like so and then move this along my y-axis and all I'm going to simply do is select this, my end torus, right click and select join. So then I become one object and if I hit play now we have this kind of what looks like a kind of ball and chain basically uh, attached to our, ob to our chain link. As you see, because we've got physics in, sometimes the meshes will sort of hook into each other. But again, in the real world, when you've got these sort of links and the spread is the gap is so wide, that can happen. So again, play about with it. Feel free to ask any questions down below. And we will look at how we can use this in other programs in the future. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.